IPS controllers make it easy to keep water in pools, spas, and water features clean, clear, and chemically balanced. The IPS controller and flow cell are mounted to an ABS plastic pre-drilled mounting board. The controller components are the front panel with displays that show pH and ORP levels, function buttons, and electrical connections for auxiliary chemical pumps. The flow cell contains the fittings for the pH and ORP sensors, flow switch, and flow valves. The kit also includes two compression fittings, an inline strainer, 25 feet of 3 8 inch tubing, two hose clamps, and the pH and ORP sensors. To install the controller, you will need a cordless drill, a 7 16 inch drill bit, a 1 quarter inch NPT tap, a 13 16 inch or adjustable wrench, Teflon tape, shears, and appropriate fasteners to mount the controller securely. Choose a location to mount the controller within 6 feet of a GFCI power source. It should also be at least 10 feet from the water's edge. Choose a spot near the time clock with easy access and securely attach the mounting board. To install the controller, first turn off the power at the breaker box. Drill a 7 16 inch hole in a horizontal section of the pipe, downstream from the filter and upstream from the heater. This will bring fresh, filtered water into the flow cell. Drill into a fitting on the pipe to provide a more substantial area for the threads. Tap a 1 quarter inch NPT port. Wrap the threaded end of the compression fitting with Teflon tape. Insert the fitting into the tapped hole and tighten. Be careful not to over-tighten the fitting. Measure a length of tubing long enough to allow easy routing from the pipe fitting to the flow cell. Insert one end of the tubing into the compression fitting and hand tighten the nut to secure the tubing. Insert the other end of the tubing into the valve on the far left of the flow cell. Push the tubing into the valve as far as possible and pull back slightly. This will lock the tubing in place. This port contains an integrated flow switch that will prevent chemicals from feeding into the system when the system is off. To remove the tubing from the valve, push the retainer inwards while pulling the tubing away from the valve. To install the inline strainer, cut the tubing. Orient the strainer so that the arrows on the top are pointing in the direction of the flow of water, away from the pipe, and toward the flow cell. Insert the ends of the tubing into the valves on either end of the strainer. Using the hose clamps, secure the strainer to a pipe. There are two methods of installation into the right hand or effluent valve on the flow cell. Method one is to install the additional compression fitting into the drain plug at the bottom of a pool pump basket. Remove the drain plug and securely tighten the fitting into the hole to prevent suction leakage. Be sure you do not over tighten the fitting. Measure another length of tubing to allow easy routing from the plug to the right valve of the flow cell. Method two is to drill a hole in a section of the pipe beyond the pool heater. Tap the hole and screw in the additional compression fitting. Insert one end of the tubing into the fitting and hand tighten. Insert the other end of the tubing into the right valve of the flow cell. To install the sensors, starting with the ORP sensor, plug the cable into the BNC connector on the controller labeled ORP. Remove the protective bottle from the end of the sensor and set it aside for winterizing. 
loosen one of the compression fittings on the top of the flow cell. Carefully insert the sensor to about one half inch from the bottom of the flow cell interior. Hand tighten the connector. Repeat the previous steps to connect the pH sensor. The center valve is a sample port. Clip a short piece of the tubing and install it into the center valve of the flow cell. When the valve is opened, the system water may be manually tested to make sure the chemical readings match the readings on the controller display. While the other valves are kept open during the system operation, this valve is usually kept closed. To power the unit, the recommended method is to have a professional electrician wire the unit into the time clock on the load side of the circulation pump circuit. This will allow the unit to be turned on only when the system turns on. As an alternative, you may also plug the three-pronged grounded plug into a GFCI circuit. The pigtail outlets on the underside of the unit are for controlling chemical pumps or other devices that may be part of your system. When the installation is complete, connect the chemical pumps and auxiliary devices, then turn the pool pump on. IPS controllers. Chemical automation made easy. Thank you.